Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at the GORUCK Heritage M23. And I was really excited when this was announced as I've really enjoyed using the M23 in ripstop nylon. That's continued to hold up well, but given the more classic kind of rucksack style appearance of the M23, it just seemed like a perfect fit for the wax canvas that is part of GORUCK's Heritage lineup of bags. The GR1 is one of my favorites in the Heritage lineup. So I have it here just kind of as a reference point. I'm not gonna do a deep dive comparison of the M23 and GR1 as I have done that in a previous video if you wanna check that out. In this video, I'm just gonna be talking about what it's been like to use the M23 in these first few days that I've had it, and, you know, some of the things that I've noticed compared to the other heritage bags that I've used and the other M23. In case you're curious, if you're wanting to pick one of these up, hopefully this video can help. Before jumping in, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the exterior of the bag, the layout and the design is pretty much the same as the Ripstop Nylon M23 that I featured on the channel previously. So the biggest aesthetic difference is really gonna be in the materials as you have this wax canvas fabric now, which I think just matches with the rucksack style vibe of the bag very nicely. This sort of look to me always had more of an old school classic appearance and now the wax canvas just takes it to the next level. I think that it looks great with this style. It's a versatile look. I've always thought that the Heritage lineup just felt a little bit more versatile than some of the tactical options that GORUCK offers. So this you know, carries into here. These types of bags with the straps are never gonna feel completely minimal, but it does feel like something that's gonna work well in a lot of different environments, whether you're taking this into the outdoors, traveling, walking around the city, or even taking into the office. The wax canvas that's used here feels very similar to the one that's used on the GR1s and GR2s that I've used in the past, which was great to see. I did get this in the dark oak colorway. I believe it was offered in olive and a couple of other options, but dark oak is always my favorite, so I was happy to be able to snag one. Uh, and you know, this is a material that is always gonna feel very rugged and continue to patina nicely. I've had the GR1 for a while. It started to develop some scuffs and marks and a little bit of character. And so I'm excited to see that happen as I use the M23 a little bit more. Beyond that, you of course have the YKK zippers, nice zipper pulls, so no huge changes there. They both have the heritage style GORUCK patch included. So it's kind of this leather GORUCK that's made specifically for the Heritage Editions. The M23 includes one of them, but I did replace it with my Ted Lasso Believe patch. I'm a big fan of Ted Lasso, and I thought it just gave this bag a nice pop of color. And then, like the GR1, this does have a nice leather handle at the top, so it feels durable, it gives it a nice accent. One difference between this and the GR1, however, is that there's no leather accenting on the bottom. Here you have the straps kind of continue down, uh, so that's a little bit different. It is always nice to have kind of that extra protection on the bottom, so sad that that wasn't included here, but again, with the wax canvas, it's still gonna hold up well. Wax canvas bags are always gonna be a little bit heavier, but I haven't noticed any issues. I mean, go ruck bags, in general, unless you're getting the newer Ripstop ones or the Dyneema ones, they're fairly heavy bags in general, and I'd never really mind that because their harnesses are comfortable. It's not something that has ever really stood out to me, but just something to keep in mind. You have the you know straps along the front, which are great not only for securing the top lid, but also for adding additional items. This is where I'll typically maybe hang a jacket or a tripod, so I like that versatility that these provide in addition to allowing you to adjust the volume of the bag up and down. And then moving into the capacity, the M23 is offered in a 21 liter and a 26 liter size. I currently have the 21 liter and I also have the 21 liter GR1 here side by side. So you can see that they're very similar as far as dimensions, the height, and the depth, it's pretty close. So if you're a fan of the GR1 and the 21 liter, that's what I would go for with the M23. I've seen some of the pictures of the 26 liter and it looks really big. I'm 5'11 and I feel like it would just be a little bit too tall for you know what I typically like to use as an EDC backpack. Um, but beyond that, you know, very similar dimensions to the ripstop 
nylon bag and I think that it's still a great versatile size that's going to allow you to you know carry what you need for your day to day and is going to work well for you know navigating crowded areas jumping on a public transit carrying on as a personal item to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. One interesting difference with this one is that even though it's a heritage bag, it does have the 210D nylon that many of GORUCK's newer bags have on these straps and the back panel versus the other heritage bags that just have wax canvas on the straps and the back. So I thought that was a pretty cool change. I've generally liked this newer fabric that GORUCK has had on their bags. It's less abrasive, not that the wax canvas is, is abrasive, but you know, I think that it feels pretty nice. It's maybe slightly more breathable. And so, you know, I, I think it's a nice update. And another thing that's really cool about the M23 in general is that it's also I think one of the few GORUCK bags that actually includes a sternum strap. So you do have the webbing on the straps, which isn't always the case with the Heritage Editions. My GR1 does not have any webbing. I would have had to send it to SCARS to have that updated. So great to see that here, along with the sternum strap, which is removable if you don't want to use it. And then that 210 nylon on the back you know, feels really smooth, it's nice. You know, these back panels are never gonna be the most breathable, but you still have some slight air channels here. And uh, in general, it's felt really comfortable overall. Doing a quick run through of the organizational options, as I talked about in my other review for the M23, I really like the layout of this bag. I feel like it just offers a little bit more external access which I am a fan of. You don't have the quick access pocket that the GR1 has, unfortunately, which is one of my favorites, but that is replaced with a couple of other really useful pockets that allow you to grab your stuff quickly. So you have one pocket on the side, which is meant to hold something like a water bottle. So same thing here, no change. And then on the other side, you have one that has a couple of slip pockets on the inside, and then just a nice amount of height for anything taller that you wanna store. And then you have the quick access zippered pocket on the front, which is gonna be great for pouches, for flatter items that you're grabbing more regularly. It does have some depth, uh, but you know, I generally just store a pouch or my tablet in there, maybe a charger that I'm grabbing a little bit more quickly. And this area also has a zippered access to the main compartment. So you can actually reach in and grab something from the main area without undoing all of the straps, which I think is a really nice touch. That can be one of the annoying things of using these heritage style bags is when you have to completely release the buckle. So that works out really nicely. As far as the laptop compartment, same bomb proof style compartment, you know, accessed on the back behind the straps. It's got a false bottom to help keep your laptop protected from drops. As I noted in my review for the M23 previously, with, if you get the 21 liter version of the bag, it's not gonna really be able to handle a 15 inch laptop. I have a 14 inch MacBook Pro that fits in there comfortably, uh, but once you get bigger than that, it's gonna start to really get tight around the edges. And so if you have a large laptop, I would recommend going with the 26 liter version of the bag. And then moving into the main compartment, you still have the magnetic buckles here, which I think is a really cool change from the M22. They used to have the G-hooks, so great to see these included. You still have the GORUCK uh, arrowhead on these buckles, and they've worked very smoothly. I'm a big fan of this style. And again, you can adjust the volume, so if you want a little bit more space, or if you're not carrying as much, it'll go up or down. On the inside of the lid, you have the same zippered uh, mesh compartment. So it's gonna be a great spot for things that you're not grabbing quite as regularly. There's a little lanyard with a keychain uh, in it that's gonna be a great spot to attach a couple of things that you don't want getting lost. And you also have the M23 label in this area. And this is where typically it might say that the bag was made in the USA. It doesn't have that here. It does say it on the GR1 label. So that's something to keep in mind. And then you have the drawstring closure which you know helps just keep everything secure, particularly for keeping the rain out of your bag. You can loosen this up. It'll also expand up if you're carrying some extra stuff. And then, you know, this has just the top loading bucket style main area. So in here, I just tossed in my typical loadout. I have a packable rain jacket. I have my headphones. I have a bunch of pouches, Evergoods Cap 1 and 2. I have Bellroy Tech Kit. I just tossed in a bunch of stuff to showcase how much it can hold. Not that I'm always carrying all of these necessarily. There was enough height 
to hold my Levitate portable standing desk. So yeah, just checked off all of the things that I would need. And then inside of this compartment, you do have an additional um, elastic sleeve, like the ones that are in the GR1. So this will be great for holding a notebook, maybe your tablet. If you wanna ruck with this, you can probably do so. I have been trying it out with the ripstop nylon version of the M23 and you know it's worked out well. I placed my ruck plate here into this sleeve. I don't like to carry my laptop and the ruck plate. It starts to feel really tight, so that would be my recommendation, but you can use it for that. And then you have a zippered mesh compartment here as well that will allow you to grab smaller items that you don't want getting lost in the bottom of the bag. At the moment, I just have a notebook in here. But again, same layout as the previous edition of the M23, which is great because I think that it worked well. I really like the updates. I've used that bag a lot. And it's just an excellent alternative to the Heritage GR1. I think I still tend to gravitate a little bit more towards the GR1 layout because I like having a clamshell style bag. But you know, I'm fortunate to be able to have both of these to just kind of compare, use at different times. I'm gonna be experimenting with both of them over the next few months. Um, but if you're curious about the M23 and you're just looking for a rugged rucksack style bag, it's gonna be an excellent option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great initial experience testing out the GORUCK Heritage M23. You can currently purchase this on GORUCK site for around $300. That's what I paid for the 21 liter edition that you see here in this video. And, you know, and GORUCK's bags in general tend to come at a premium price point. If you're a fan of the company and you're looking for rugged bags, then you know it just comes with the territory. I've had great experiences with them, so I'm happy to invest in these bags, but I know that's definitely not for everyone. One of the interesting things about this one in particular is that it doesn't seem to be made in the US as some of their other bags are. There's nothing on the site or on the bag to indicate that it is. I did notice that the price point for a Heritage bag was a little bit lower than some of their other ones that are made in the USA, so it seems like that was done to strike a little bit more of a balance and make it a more accessible price point. Uh, so far, you know, with this bag, I haven't noticed any quality differences or issues, but you know, it's just something that I wanted to call out in case you are considering purchasing. If you're interested in any of GORUCK's other bags, I've done a lot of in-depth reviews for their GR1s, the GR2s, I've done the M23, I've tried to cover a lot of the different fabrics that they've been releasing recently. So they have a lot of great options. I also did a larger video comparing all the different styles that they have. So I'll link to all those in the description below if you wanna check them out. And if you're interested in taking a look at some other great EDC bags, I'll also link to my top 15 everyday carry backpacks of 2023, as well as to some of the other roundup videos that I've done that feature bags from Evergoods, Bellroy, and some of those other great companies that I talk about a lot on the channel. And I'm curious to hear what you all think of the Heritage M23 and how it compares to some of the other great Heritage style bags that are currently on the market. If there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.